welcome to HubSpot TV. It's April 23rd, 2010, and we're coming to you live from Cambridge, Massachusetts. <laughs> I'm Karen Rubin. And I'm Mike Volpe. We have a special guest we joining do. us this week. Very um, special. We will talk about her in just a Ooh, moment. Look at that. Nice and sign. You like that sign? I got all kinds of signs today. We're trying something a little bit new. So the hashtag, if you're watching the show live on Twitter, is HubSpot TV. Um, so we could talk about that. Uh, but you want to talk about our... our we do. Yeah. We have exciting news today. We, we have exciting news. Well, we have lots of exciting news. Tons of stuff. First, as always, check us out on iTunes. Yep. We have 88 previous episodes right. that you can look at full That's of right. lots of interesting stuff but most importantly we're looking for an intern yes we need a hubspot someone, tv intern someone very special to be a hubspot tv producer you even get credits in the show you do you don't get paid right but you get credits <laughs> you don't need to be paid no um but we're looking for someone to come help us out on fridays and do you know five-ish hours of work a week um karen-rubin.com that's my website karen-rubin.com backslash interns and you can give us some information about yourself and we'll be out reaching out to talk to you if you google karen rubin i'm the second url because that woman in california has karenrubin.com i'm still bitter <laughs> we can I, I can't tell. <laughs> totally. Um, did I cover everything? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's dive okay. in. Why don't you... Excellent. So, today, you are the author of How to Start Your Business with $100. Fantastic book. Well, to my Vanna White. Dun, 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 exactly. Dun, dun, dun. Um, and so, this book came because you started Wild Web Women with $100. Wild Women Entrepreneurs. Wild Women Entrepreneurs. I'm sorry. But I sort of like Wild Web Women. Wild I don't know. Women. <laughs> That's good. I like that. <laughs> like that. <laughs> um, wild women entrepreneurs with one hundred dollars, and then you wrote a book about the experience of doing that and everything. Yeah. Right? Well, really, it was about showing people that you don't necessarily need money, uh, particularly in today's economy, in order to start a business. So what it does is sort of encompasses everything. Um, you know, whether or not uh, you need to be a DBA or an LLC or a C corp, and walks through that process of um, you know financially what do you need to do right. services out there on the web what are you know what's out there now that you can use and it's already outdated you know because there's so many different websites yeah. that are out there that um, small businesses or entrepreneurs can use that it, it doesn't really where you spend your money you get to choose now where that wasn't the case even five years ago three years ago so so figured I'd put together a step-by-step -step of uh, how to yeah, all the good stuff and Mike Volpe was very very kind to uh, to write <laughs> Shaking your head at how kind you were. <laughs> no ego over Aww. here. <laughs> Aww, no, he was he was kind enough in order to write a review of the book, and I, I appreciate that. So thank you. He looking for your name? It's, it's under it's more right buzz. Here. It's under more buzz, right in the front inside cover. Sorry, that's pretty yeah. exciting. Seth, Seth Godin gets first dibs. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> but you know, Seth was only, up there, and that's only okay. Only slightly. Yeah. Yes. More See, buzz. There it's he fine. is. Well done. Um, so I actually wanted to talk about like. Wild women entrepreneurs. What was the goal? Like, wild women. I mean, I love. I, I'm a wild woman. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. Are you but, like, really? Had you noticed? I had no idea <laughs> at all. <laughs> what was the like goal? What was the, the my, inspiration? By the way, um, the fact that I got this little song of dance from Karen earlier from um, her church camp days was sure there was a dance. Uh, pretty phenomenal. It involved a dead tree. And, That's for you, mom. Oh, <laughs> it involved more than a dead tree. Oh, there might have been a hood there too. <laughs> <laughs> More than one. <laughs> and there'll be a music video later on this evening. No. <laughs> no, there were no video cameras then. No, but the reason why I started it, um, I was actually running um, offline events for Rise.com, which was the precursor to LinkedIn. And I noticed that men and women network differently. And I also noticed that women didn't necessarily know, the women that would show up to these events, didn't necessarily know where to find the resources that they needed, whether they'd be, uh, whether it be babysitting or VC. And if they did find those things, they weren't sure what to do with it afterwards. Yep. And so, you know, I looked at all of those things and I was um, primarily singing at the time. Um, but I looked at all those things and I approached three other women and said, you know, I'd really love to find a way to show women, you know, how they can do this and how all they need to do is reach out um, to their community. That was the other thing is that it really bothered me that in today's society there was this lack of community. I, I, I know many, many people who don't even know their neighbors. Mm -hmm. And so men and women alike, you know, I said, we need to change this. So I approached three other women and with that, Wild We was started. And we are now the largest community of entrepreneurial women in the world. And a third of our membership are men. 
smart men. Ah, they are the smart <laughs> men. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> At least they're entrepreneurial. <laughs> what? <laughs> they are. What about this guy? <laughs> <laughs> they're entrepreneurial, right? Aren't they? Entrepreneurs, it's the whole Keep theme going. of the community, I'm just saying. Open okay. mouth, insert foot. I I love love <laughs> they're trailblazing into a new community. Yes. They're trying some things out. Um, so, I don't know. What's, All right. Well, what we questions do you want to ask? Because you, you crowdsourced a bunch of questions. You did, so, I think we're going to ask a bunch I of questions. I have one first. Yeah? Because okay. we'll get into the crowdsourced questions, right. which are fantastic. Um, you mentioned before that you were mostly singing. You have one of the most interesting collections of uh, the bio. And I'm going to read it because oh. when I read it. The bio. The bio. When I, <laughs> of things that you've done. This is true. She's the CEO of Wild Women Entrepreneurs, CEO of Janae Dunn Ventures, co-founder of the Massachusetts Artist Leaders Coalition, founder of The Leaders. She's a professional opera singer, a social media strategist, and a faculty member at Northeastern. And you're also a um, I want to say priest, but I know you're not a priest. <laughs> There's oh, a few so things are probably <laughs> limiting you to being a priest. You're a minister. I hope so. Yes. <laughs> you're a minister too, right? Yes, I am. The, uh, like opera singer, minister, social media strategist, CEO of all these companies. I, how do you do it? Like, I outsource. <laughs> <laughs> I'm impressed, that's all. She does it all, and she's going to sing for me later. Oh, uh, am I? <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, Why not? Okay, maybe. <laughs> Only if you do a dance later on. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> We're so spiraling out of control. So <laughs> why don't we have a question from John M. that you uh, crowdsource, which is how do you start a business when you have poor credit? Yeah, I thought this was a really interesting question because yeah. many people have um, you know, bad credit, whether or not it be you know, accruing credit card debt, because of poor choices or, um, you know, I, I know that- Tough economies, like lots of people. Well, yeah. in, I mean, just the cost of school today. Yeah, totally. Uh, how many people right. finance or try yeah. to finance school through, uh, through a credit card? And that's a nice thing about uh, putting this book together was, you know, you don't necessarily need to even tap into your credit. It's mm. about leveraging other things. Um, you know, there's many things that can be leveraged and money is just one of them yeah. you know so if you need if you absolutely need to get a loan or need some type of cash flow or a large amount of cash flow um, then you know it's reaching out to the people that maybe can co-sign a loan or it's getting partners in order to start that business you know it doesn't necessarily have mm -hmm. to be just you and I think that when people start businesses they think that oh it is just me no, you know, find like-minded people who can help you. Um, so I'm really glad that you asked that question because it's, uh, it's a question that I know a lot of people have. You also actually, this one came from Kathy Ellen. This one is one that I love. She says, I'm not big on going to network events, but I know I have to. Do you have some tips? Yeah, what I loved about this question is that um, what I found out that um, this was an interesting tidbit. 90% of people would, would say that they're shy. I mean, I would say that I'm shy, no I, one else. I would say I'm shy too, but wow. no one would agree with that. But it's true, you're all laughing, but when I'm in a room full of people I don't know, at, then there's a cocktail bar. I'm much more likely to sit in the corner drinking my cocktail than talking to people. Right. If Which, I don't know them, I get shy. Well, and what's funny is that everyone goes to networking events for the same purpose, to yep. network. And it's going in with an agenda. You know, what are the questions that you're looking to ask? What are you trying to find out? And it's not about the hard sell. You know, it's about getting to know a person, asking them questions. You know, what is your story? Mm -hmm. um, and finding out the tidbits within their story about how, you know, either right. you guys can work together or who they may know. And then ask, you know, this might not interest you, but who do you know that might be interested in either this product or the service or has a connection here because that's really what it's about you know online or offline it's about people connecting with people mm -hmm. I think you're right it's all about little tips uh, Yoav Shapira who's not here today he's gonna get uh, some hard time for that later um, he gave me the tip once because I told him that I have a really hard time with this and he said first of all every networking event decide how many people you have to talk to give yourself a goal like I need to talk to five people and make a connection he goes and then look around the room and find interesting people like it might be that you think someone's got an interesting hat or you notice that their company's interesting, but come up with something that you're gonna go talk to that person about and then go start that conversation well, be, and start the easy things to see where it goes. Yeah, well, because people feel more comfortable with small talk right. than they do with something that's really um, pointed or intense. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, why not break that ice with, oh, oh, you're drinking Sam, so am I, hey, cheers. Yeah. You know, or I like that tie or something that- Very nice hat. Yes, <laughs> and compliments, the fact that you're making them feel right. good 
good, you know, and you feel good because you're giving them a compliment, mm -hmm. and then you can open it up. Yeah. So totally. speaking of small talk, you also got in some uh, fun or funny questions yes. when you crowdsourced this, <laughs> and I'm asking this one because I actually mostly want to know if you know the person who asked it. Uh, but Bob S asked, <laughs> "Are you really single?" <laughs> And I want to know, like, and it seemed that he put, like, ah, ha, 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 after it. No, so I was no, like, no. do you know Bob? Like, I actually just... put that to Rebecca. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Because I thought that was kind of funny. Um, yeah. Well, the answer is yes, I am really single. Okay. <laughs> and no, I don't know Bob S. Okay. Well, I'm maybe sure Bob if I should... want to know yeah. Bob S. I don't know. Maybe. But maybe you can know. find me at... The, the Sun Queen. There we go. <laughs> So nice. HubSpot TV slash dating service right here. Right. Whatever you need. Marketing well, tips. You can auction you me want. off to raise more money for the... Um, Is that legal? <laughs> <laughs> we actually need to I talk about that part up here. We do. Yeah, we do. So go for it. Um, all right. So, um, so right, we're going to do something pretty excited here. Um, Janae's got this fantastic book, but okay. Um, I'll do this and then we're still talking about the superheroes, right? Yeah. yeah. I want to. Okay, good. Okay. Um, so, how to start your business with $100, and you're going to give away 50% of the proceeds for everyone who buys the book for, based on today yep. um, to either the House of Possibilities or Boston Scholars, which are charities supported by Brian Halligan and Mike Volpe, um, which is very fantastic. So, we're doing a little bit of charity support here at HubSpot today. Um, so, again, go buy the book so that you can help out some kids. And the URL for the book is, it's at Janae.net, right? Oh, right? No. No? Actually, it's That's up on HubSpot. It's up oh, on it is. HubSpot. TV. Right HubSpot on the page. TV. Rebecca okay, took Rebecca's care of that. Rebecca's nodding. HubSpot.tv. Perfect. Always ahead of the game. Perfect. Cool. <laughs> awesome. All Excellent. Right. So go buy the book, folks. All right. So then the other question here the under big, the big, the big question. The big question is, what superhero do you relate to? I'm Batman. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not Batwoman. No. No. What? Do you have a Robin? Do I care? Like a sidekick, someone that you. Tell, what is Robin's role, really? Well, I told my. I mean, there's. there's <laughs> <many. Yeah. laughs> okay, let's not get into that. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Do we want to get into that in this episode? No. Okay. But, um, yeah. I, I Why mean, are you Batman? Well, because no one can really find me. I'm sort of dark and aloof. Oh, all right. Very intense and slightly brooding, depending. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to know about you guys. Are we guys. back into the dating section of HubSpot TV? <laughs> For raising money, sure. Yes. <laughs> but I want to, I'm sure everyone else wants to know about, about you guys and, and who your so, superheroes are. I saw that you, you sent are. this question and I had to think about it. I went and did a little bit of research and my initial instinct was Wonder Woman. Because who doesn't want to be Wonder Woman? And, and what I didn't realize is Wonder Woman came out after World War II to inspire women for women's lib. It's all about like women's right and sexual equality, uh, all those good things. And then so why I was she like, just get a lasso. Like I would have given her. A... But she also has powers over animals, which I didn't realize. Yes, and she <laughs> has this jet that you can't see. And she wears a cool little crown and these armbands with the bracelets. Not so, into it. but then I went and I did some research and I found this website of the twentieth. Sex, 20 sexiest female superheroes. And on that list, they had Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Now, I could say that I didn't really think that Buffy was a superhero, Heck but yeah. if she's a superhero, I'm going to be Buffy. Is it about the steak and the heart? No, it's about Angel. If you watch the TV show, he was hot. <laughs> Sorry. Mike, what superhero are you going to be? <laughs> I'm just excited for the part of the show where we get to talk about marketing. <laughs> um, if I had, I mean, if I had to pick one, I would go with somebody who has good access to like tech and gadgets. Uh -huh. So I might go. This is kind of a cop out because it's more modern, but I might go Iron Man or actually Batman had pretty good yeah, gadgets. Yeah, Batman's like whole like, thing like, was yeah, the tech and gadgets. The good gadgets. That's really what I would want. So that's probably right. what I would go with. Yeah. All right, good stuff. Um, so I've got a. We've got a comment from Ken Barlson Hi, Ken. on Twitter Hola. saying, "I'm watching HubSpot TV for the first time. It's impressive." Hi, Ken. Um, I don't know what show. Oh no, sorry, Karen Bartleson. I read that wrong. Um, Hi, Karen. My computer. Hi, even more now. We yeah, have the same name. My computer's a little far away. My eyes are failing me. Um, I don't know what show Karen's watching because I don't know if we got to the impressive part yet. Um, but you know, we're having a lot of fun today. What? Um, and then Christine Lexa. Hi, says watching us on TV. Haven't joined in a while, and she picked a good week. Oh, welcome! All right. oh. See, so, so maybe I'm just falling victim to all the stuff that I don't understand that you guys are talking about. So, fair enough. All right. I'll be so, quiet. 
Uh, let's move on then. I have the hours. I wanted to be signed. There's awesome. so many right, signs this week. I know. We got a lot of signs. This, this is week. the Doing It Right. Yeah. Um, and this was actually uh, something that Mike published. Yeah. Um, 50 marketing charts and graphs from original research. And it That's was right. an ebook that you put together with all these charts or presentation, whatever. Yeah. So, but you, you said to me, this is a Doing It Right. And there's some specific reasons why you wanted it to be the so, Doing It Right. So why here's the reason why. why. We have all of this great content. We've published blog articles and like three or four different reports that were their own individual ebooks and things like that. But you, what we did here is there was no brand new content in this thing. Mm -hmm. It was all repackaging a special part of our existing content. So taking all the charts and graphs we could find from the last like year or so and putting them, just the charts and graphs in one presentation. So it's sort of like stripping them out of the reports and all that sort of stuff and putting that together and packaging it up. Uh, and it's got over, I think, almost 8,000 views on SlideShare. Nice job. Um, you know, a whole bunch of different stuff. So again, when you're thinking about your content, don't be afraid to repackage and reuse your content. That's really right. sort of the element of the doing it right. Very so, good. There we go. Cool. So we've got headlines now. So and, and then our first story. Ooh, look at week. the new sign. Facebook's yeah. new social features for all websites. Yeah, also <laughs> known as Facebook takes one step closer to world domination. That was yes, the headline I wrote. So, I like I mean, my headline better. Huge announcement this week. Huge announcement. Giant announcement. I want to know what you guys think of that announcement, by the way. So, we yeah. want to know what you think yeah. about it too. <laughs> like, I mean, there's a lot going Super on. Super interesting. One. I mean, essentially, Facebook came out and that said uh, they came out with a like button. This is the basic thing for the internet. For the internet, so it can go all on it. every single website on the internet. Internet. And me, as a Facebook user, when I'm reading a New York Times article or looking at a product on Amazon or um, at Mike Volpe's blog, which I read religiously, I'm I sure. can say like, and then all my friends on Facebook get in, they get told that I like that content. Yeah. And it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And then, it's also kind of scary. based on yes. that data, they actually also have all these other widgets that you can embed on your own website. So they have a thing that's recommendations, so it'll recommend based on you and your friends right. other content on that website that you should read. There's uh, other things where it'll show you all the activity from you and your friends about that website. Right. So you can see like what articles on that particular blog that your friends from Facebook have liked. There's all sorts of really, really interesting things that start to happen once that data is available. So it kind of takes the Facebook social network and makes it... Applies it to everything. Everything on the internet. Yes. I they want to take over the world. Well, they world do want to take, well, and yes. this, I think this is where I sort of get a little antsy. Maybe it's because I work on so much artist legislation, both mm. on a, on net, you know, both on a state level and a national level. Um, you know, the web wants to be organically social. I mean, that's, yeah. I, I mean, it, that's so apparent, but I guess for me, the scary part about that is having one or two or three companies that actually run that mm -hmm. or yeah. really dictate that is where my hair starts to go Let's to see. go up. Yeah. And also intellectual property. How does that actually affect intellectual property? Yeah. You know, if someone takes stuff that's on your site and then shares that onto Facebook by um, definition or, or your terms and agreements that you sign on Facebook, anything that you put on Facebook is then their property or they can use or repurpose. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's there's tons and tons of things, pros and cons that I, I think, yeah, that yeah. I think business, you know. I have to say when I was first reading about it to touch on your first point, like I read about this and I was like, so now Facebook's gonna have as much data about everything in the world as Google. Exactly. It's like yeah. Facebook and Google know every single thing about you. If you do yeah. this, Facebook will know everything you like, they will know everything you read, and ultimately the reason they're doing it is for advertising. Is for advertising. Yeah. Because if you go around the internet liking all these different things, they can give you even more targeted advertising, not just about your likes, but about your likes today. Your likes right now, as yeah. opposed to the likes that you put on your Facebook profile three or four or ten years ago when you set it up. I guess Facebook wasn't around ten years ago, but you know what I meant. A long time ago. But really what it comes down to then, because obviously uh, with the web changing, it comes down to corporate responsibility. And it's really, the onus has to be on each one of these companies to do the right thing. You right. know, and how is, you know, but it's, that's a it's not scary. A, well, yeah. Like, well, but, so, but here's, there's two sides to this. Yeah. There's the like philosophically scary, like, well, will Facebook own all the data in the world and how scary would that be? And that's fine. But as like a practical, you know, business owner or marketer, you're sort of like, well, it's not my job to like worry about like the trends of the world. Like there's like governments and like things like that that like can try to worry about that stuff, right? My job is to like get the most that I can get from my business. And, there's and you know what? Adding cool. that stuff to your Ugh. site is probably gonna help your business. There's so. some super cool stuff about it. We were reading and you, you told me before the show you haven't figured out how to do this. But if you put this on your site um, and people like 
your different pages or your blog where you've got you know all these different posts and they like certain posts yeah you can then reach out through Facebook to anybody who's liked contents on your website yeah so it takes that whole Facebook business page mentality where you've got a fan page or a business page and you can reach out to those people makes it for your whole website yeah for an individual business or an individual website this is a phenomenally beneficial move but then like an aggregate do you need to be worried about some of this you know sort of like does facebook own too much data and do right. they try to control the social graph and things like that or, and i don't know it, it remains to be seen if that's gonna be true or not well, right and but i think the question for every individual to ask is you know if i'm having this on my site Am I comfortable sharing this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, am, yeah. am I comfortable yeah. with this really going out yeah. to the social right. sphere? And that's, yeah. I mean, those are just questions that individuals... But the vast majority of the time, best. anything that you're publishing out to a website, you should be comfortable with it being, like, propagated all over the Well, you I mean, would hope and people, think. You would hope. But, <laughs> but, and people can already share it. This is just making it easier. Like, it's not like any URL, you can put that into Facebook and share it. This is just making it phenomenally easier. But the point that Fred Wilson made that we were talking about the before the yeah. show, based on that topic, is you have you have a social graph, but you don't really have one. You have multiple social yeah. graphs. You have your personal social graph that for me is my friends and my family and the people I talk to regularly. And I have my business social graph. And they get different pieces of information. And my friends and family are going to get pissed if I'm already always talking about SEO and social media and things that I talk about for work and my business people they really don't want to see my vacation pictures or the 47 photos of my cats that I put up in the last week like they just don't want to see that stuff and so if it's all on Facebook I don't have a good way to separate it well yeah does anyone I mean, really want to see that many pictures of your I'm, oh, I'm, wait people. look at the nodding heads all of these people have looked at all my there cat are, pictures there in the are, last there week. are I mean cat pictures online are like their own sort of category but, um, there's I mean you're absolutely right and it's interesting it'll be interesting to see if people start to look to Facebook to be the managing all of their different levels of permissions yeah. and their social graphs which Facebook does have abilities to give you some sort of segmentation but they've and struggled with I, that. well like, it's, let's hard. Not it's hard they've got to no, it's it's been hard so I it's gonna be interesting to see where all this yeah, evolves but exactly. At the end of the day, the marketing takeaway is Go for it, Mike. Bring all it of this. Uh, so it makes social media more important now. Uh, this makes your Facebook connections and your content much more important yeah. too. So having this established presence on Facebook where you have lots of friends, you've got lots of fans of your business, having content that is more interesting and more likely to have people hit that like button, this makes all that even more important. So it just amplifies yeah. everything we've been talking about for years. I do have to say that um, I, I help my dad out with his inbound marketing. Yeah. I do a lot of work with him on that. And look, I am definitely going to, over the weekend, put the like button on his website because he has stuff that you look at and you're like, wow, this is cool, like it. It does really well yeah. on YouTube, but Facebook it hasn't really caught on yet, Not and yet. this might be a way yeah. to help it spread better through Facebook. It I, seems already, really I, already, realistic. I already threw up three of the widgets on my site just to kind of see what will happen. It'll be interesting to see what the results are going right. to be. We're starting to do some experimentation in the HubSpot blog with it too pretty soon, so it'll be interesting. Yeah, Very cool stuff. Cool. All right, so next up we have TV ads making a comeback. <gasps> really? Yeah. Oh, What's we'll up see. with this one? So um, this is actually pretty cool. This was from MarketingPilgrim.com, and CNN and... Um, Pardon the interruption on ESPN. They're trying yeah. something new. Yeah. During the commercials of their show, they've got like a picture-in-picture -picture view of what's still going on in the studio. So for live shows, you're watching the ad, but you can also see what the anchors on CNN are doing. Yeah. So if makeup they're like fixing their hair, doing makeup, picking chairs, their nose. shuffling papers, whatever. I yeah. don't know. This just, this just sort of reminds me of rubbernecking. Like when, yeah. uh, you know, it's, when you pass an accident yeah. on, on a highway. <laughs> but, to but, but, it works. but here's the thing. It attracts your attention, ah, right? But does it? Well, what they're saying is the stats so far seem to be that more people are watching the ads. There's but supposedly less But I think it'll go fast. like this and then tail off. Like, Maybe. Well, as all of a sudden, and you realize between every commercial break, they get their hair straightened or their blush yeah, fixed. You know, it's not that exciting. I don't know. As an advertiser, what I would probably do is I would uh, test, you know, yeah. you know, test the ROI when, um, you know, when this is streaming, and then also test it, um, you know, when people are fast forwarding, and then right. before. Uh, you know the percentages before yeah. fast forwarding or DVR became yeah. became popular, and see and and just compare. Well, I also think if people are watching their ads for this in picture in picture, they're not watching the ads. Right. They're watching what's going on in the picture in picture. So is the benefit of the ad? I mean, are we thinking it's like subliminal messaging? If you hear it, it will well, sink well, in. Maybe, and will they yeah. associate that person or whatever's going on in the background with that ad? And right. say that it's not necessarily. I don't want to say positive, but say it is like fixing their hair or picking their teeth. Um, you know, right. will they associate that with that brand? 
But here's the thing. I mean, the networks all need to figure out some way to start to make money, right? <laughs> and so this is one of, one of their attempts to try to enhance the ads and sort of the, I mean, the other thing that people are doing is like a lot of the late night talk show hosts are starting to incorporate the advertising content into the show. It's right. so like Jimmy Kimmel does this a lot. So he has like contests yeah. like part of the show. Like you can't not watch this because it's part of the show. And we're going to talk about the Snickers contest right now. And right. Just, right. So there, I mean, all these networks are trying to figure out ways to enhance the advertising. So it can't be you know, stripped out for the product. And this is one way to kind of get more of the content into the advertising mm -hmm. versus the other way around. Yeah. It's interesting. It's an interesting try. But here's the thing. The marketing takeaway here is... The marketing takeaway here is... is even if the ads are optimized, you want to be the content, not the ads. Right. It doesn't matter if more people are watching the ads. You still don't want to be the ad. That's right. So That's produce right. your own show. Be your own content. All right. Next up, so, we have Salesforce acquires Jigsaw. Well, they haven't actually... Uh, they, well, well I mean, announced... Well, not done yet, but they're trying to acquire Jigsaw. It's a definitive agreement. It was only a $150 million deal. It's going to go through. So what does Jigsaw do? Uh, so Jigsaw um, is a great tool to spam people and cold call them a lot. <laughs> uh, because here's the way it works. I have a whole bunch of business cards that I've uploaded to my Outlook or my Gmail contacts or whatever, and I can upload those to Jigsaw, and then I can get credits, and I can use those credits to get contacts of other people. Okay? Really? I mean, right? I mean, so it's essentially, just, I don't know. it's like it's, giving the contact information you have for other people's contact information. That's right. And then, and as a marketer, you can actually even just purchase it, even if you haven't uploaded any. You'd be like, oh, well, I want to buy 700 contacts for these types but of companies and things like that. It's not really a bad deal for Salesforce to get this well, database. No, I mean, I mean, so, so, I mean, it was funny because TechCrunch, when Jigsaw first came out, Michael yeah. Arrington actually called them evil, yes. uh, which you know. I mean, yeah, he was a, kind of harsh. He was yes. definitely very harsh, um, and I think, and I think then Jigsaw changed a few things in sort of the terms of service and things like that. And now, and then he said they're sort of like just kind of morally okay. wrong. Yes, well, morally wrong. No longer evil. They're just morally wrong, right? Well, they were and actually so, giving cash for their. Well, contacts. they were they were originally giving cash, yeah. So now they switched the credits thing and things like that. And um, one thing which I highly recommend to all of you is you can actually go to Jigsaw and you can completely opt out of their service. Yes. Yeah. So about halfway down the page, they have a remove yourself from Jigsaw button. You put that. You put your e click that. Put your email address in you get an email back you can see what information they have on you and you can be like nope exclude Delete. me <laughs> exactly uh, so I am not in jigsaw um, so but here's the thing here's why did Salesforce buy them well think about this every time you create a new Salesforce account you have this great CRM system and you get all the salespeople that are ready to like they're all organized they have all this stuff but they, they don't have any leads because Salesforce is empty when you first start it so the question is like is this a, an opportunity for Salesforce to start to like automatically fill up accounts yep. or to sell you some data along with your subscriptions so you instantly have a bunch of leads now again, I think we would argue that these leads are completely outbound. They've never heard of your company before. And by really the way, they're you. getting calls from all the other people that are doing the same exact thing with Salesforce and Jigsaw, right? Yeah. So, you know. Um, you just but, talked faster than I think I've ever heard you talk before. I know. I'm ex we're in marketing stuff. <laughs> I'm excited I'm about excited the marketing now, stuff. Yeah. So, Whatever in any gets event, you so it's, it's kind of interesting. Um, <laughs> Wonder just, Woman obviously doesn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Why don't you finish so, this one up, In any case, <laughs> <laughs> the marketing takeaway here is just if you've got, a, well, first of all, remove yourself from Jigsaw so you don't get cold called and spammed. But second of all, if you have a large database, think about leveraging contact cleaning and updating services. Yeah. Basically, they'll help you figure out if the data within your database is accurate and clean uh, and not yeah. dirty. So let's say you've, you've generated so a few thousand leads. inbound leads yes. and you want to say, oh, well, I want to make sure the company names are right and maybe have the right phone numbers and things like that. That might be a really a good way to use data like this, and yep. that is uh, a future service potentially coming out of the, all this. So, so we have a really cool. quick forum fodder. We Came do. from Dan M. Don M. Don M. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Mike and my eyes are both going. Um, and he basically had an SEO question: Can irrelevant inbound links hurt your Google ranking? Mm. So, for example, if you're on a wine bar site, wine review site, and you post a comment, but then link back to your SEO site because you're an SEO consultant. Yeah. Is that going to hurt your SEO rankings? Mm, interesting. You were very interested in this, Mike. What do you think the answer is? Uh, I don't know. I don't think it's going to hurt your rankings, yeah. uh, but I think sites from sites that have con links from sites that have very little relevance to your site are not going to really help you that much. Yeah. I think is right. really the way to think about it. But frankly, the types of links that you need to be mostly worried about are really really spammy links from like really yes. really crappy directories and things like that because yes. if you get an ex exorbitant amount of those as compared to your other links, that can actually hurt you. If like 80% of your links are from all these really crappy link farms and directories and you don't have any other good sort of natural strong links, uh, Google will look at that and be like, wow, you're kind of a scammer uh, and that's mm -hmm. a problem. But for something like this, I wouldn't worry about it too much. But again, um, I also wouldn't focus on building those links either. I would not either. Yeah. Cool. So, marketing tip of the week. 
Um, basically, you want to give it? No, go ahead. Uh, so basically, I felt like I should be nice there. Um, <laughs> get started on Facebook if you aren't already. There's a link in the show notes to a great uh, ebook on how to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, if you are on Facebook already, look at adding these new like features. It was a huge revolution in the industry this week, and it's worth playing around with. Big time. And the backup marketing takeaway of the week is if you're thinking about starting a company, uh, <laughs> one hundred dollars. Check it out. Yeah. That's and not too again, bad. the proceeds get split between two uh, char- two charities this week. Exactly. So. Great charities. Yeah. Two very great charities. Cool. So Janae, what are you up to this weekend? Oh well, I'm going to do a little gardening, a little hiking. Ooh, very nice. Yes. That's it's cool. uh, well, that's if the weather holds out. Yeah. But how about you guys? What are you going to be doing? So I'm heading out to see my cousins this weekend, and then I'm going to stay home and play with my kittens and post more pictures to Facebook. Are you streaming? (laughs) I am. I'm live streaming my kittens, but I have it password protected because I think it's weird for everyone to be able to see that I'm not home. So I'll I'll give it to you. Okay, great. Not everyone gets to see my kittens. Oh boy. Mike, what about How you? About you, Mike? <laughs> um, so my wife is actually involved with a student organization on campus, this business organization, and they're giving uh, her and another professor an award. Ooh, uh, nice. So we have to travel down to Rhode Island and uh, check out this big award banquet for um, two professors, two of their, you know, uh, husband, two husbands, actually, they're both women, I think. And then that night, there's some big banquet with it's like us and like 100 college students. Which I think is going to be a little weird. Like, to be I honest. see keg stands so, in your near future. I, but, <laughs> but she's a professor there, so like doesn't that, matter. I don't know. I'm yeah, a professor. I don't, I'm really curious about oh, what's going to happen with this. But I'm not, I'm not saying. Not saying. I plead yeah. the fifth. Very cool. good. Anyway. Have a great weekend, folks. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>